Meet Sam. Sam is frustrated. He finished university with a good degree. He thought it would be easy now. After all, he was educated. He half expected that companies would be knocking at his door, desperate to hire him. But Sam quickly found out that this was not the case. So he is despondent, and at this stage, he would take anything. But he didn't want just anything. On the other hand, he was realistic. I'm not going to find my perfect job, he thought. But I also don't want to hate it. I want to feel like I'm working towards something. He knew he needed a plan. So he started asking around for advice, and boy did he get a lot of it. He started with his favorite high school teacher. Find your passion, she said. That's great, he thought, and went off to find it. Very quickly, he realized that he didn't know what his was. So Sam went home despondently. His mother asked what was wrong, and he explained. So she said, well, you have a lot of interests and hobbies. Why don't you see how you can make money out of those? That was better, but he had a broad range of interests and couldn't see himself doing any of them all the time. And how would he make money out of them? So he went to his uncle Fred, who is an accountant. Finance is where the money is, Fred chuckled to himself. Sam couldn't quite see the humor, as this was serious. Fred followed up with, do this and you will have a job for life and be secure. Sam liked the idea of being secure, but finance sounded boring to him. Besides, with the way technology was changing things, he wasn't sure anything would be secure in the longer term. It would also mean another three years of study, and Sam had already been studying most of his life. He wanted to be sure it would be worth it. Some of his friends had started working towards a career when they were 14 years old to become doctors or lawyers. But that hadn't appealed to Sam, and he was glad that he wasn't stuck in a career he'd chosen as a child. Now Sam was even more frustrated. But one Saturday, he started chatting to his friend Dave at the sports club after a match. Dave was older, but always seemed to have time for Sam. So Sam said to Dave, I need to choose a career, and I don't know how. Sam braced himself for the standard rehearsed advice. So, what have you done so far, Dave asked. Well, I thought it would be good to get some advice. Sam carried on to explain the story so far. Dave gave Sam an empathetic and reassuring look and then said, Firstly, you are not alone. We all start somewhere, and the reality is a lot of people go nowhere. That is not to say they are not happy, as with a bit of financial planning and the right approach, you could be happy doing almost any job. But I sense you are not looking for just any job. Sam nodded. Dave then went through each bit of advice and started by saying, Career advice these days is often rubbish. How do people really think it is really useful? They said more to himself than to Sam. And then turned to Sam. So firstly, find your passion. Very few people in their 30s or 40s know this, let alone 20s. After all, your passion can change. Another thing that can happen is that your passion can follow rather than lead your career. Lastly, if you were certain of your passion, then I don't think we'd be having this conversation. Next piece of advice. What do you enjoy doing? What are your interests? That's getting better, but there is a reason they pay you, and any job is going to be made up of far more than just one thing you enjoy. Let's look at the third bit of advice. This is where the money is, and you will have a job for life and be secure. Besides being boring to only have one job your whole life, I'm calling BS. Very little is secure these days. Even if the career is safe now, the company may not be, and your method may become redundant, and you with it. Sam was beginning to feel a bit better. He wasn't alone. Dave carried on. The rules have changed. Jobs are lasting perhaps one-fifth as long as they used to, and people are not trying to give bad advice. They just have just grown up in a different world, with technology removing the need for lots of jobs. But it's happened before. The motor car replaced the jobs of the horseman and carriage builder. It also gave rise to a massive improvement in living standards and a multitude of industries, let alone jobs. The difference these days is that it is happening quicker. It really is an exciting time, and we need to be prepared for it. In the words of Thomas Frey, 60% of the best jobs in the next 10 years have not been invented yet. In my view, it's going to be an age of creativity, Sam. You'll need to develop rare skills the market needs. With the demand for knowledge and IQ likely to be surpassed by the demand for focus, creativity, and adaptability, in fact, Cal Newport reckons focus is the new IQ. So what we need is to use the targeted approach. 
It is a practical, dynamic, responsive, and agile strategy. Sam found it odd that he was most excited about being practical. He was tired of the fluff stuff. So how do we do that? Sam asked, deliberately using "we" in the hope that Dave would help him further. Dave picked up on that. "We," well, it needs to be you that does it. Sam was once again deflated. But of course, I'll help you. Dave said with a smile, which Sam mirrored. It involves five steps. First, we will look at some of the common misconceptions there are about the job market. Second, we will look at your profile. Who is Sam? Third, we will decide on a target. Fourth, we will make sure you are prepared. And finally, we will fire on the target. Of course, knowing we are unlikely to hit the bullseye on the first go, Sam had a few reservations. Firstly, it seemed like a lot of work. Secondly, he couldn't understand why he would need to profile himself. Thirdly, he didn't know if it would work. And fourthly, if he couldn't even hit the bullseye, then what's the point? Dave could see Sam wasn't quite ready. He wasn't prepared to invest the time. But he liked Sam and thought he would give one last round of persuasion. So he asked Sam why he looked doubtful. Sam explained his reservations. Dave was pleased he had pushed further. Those were reasonable. So let's start with the amount of work required. Firstly, it is likely to be more work or a much worse result if you don't have a strategy. Secondly, there is a wonderful organization called 80,000 Hours, which you should definitely explore. The reason it is called 80,000 Hours is because it is estimated that's roughly the number of hours we will work. So, 40 hours is about 0.05 percent of your working life. My time with you and time taken to do the exercises will probably be a few hours at most. Of course, you'll need to invest some more time. But considering that your working life is 80,000 hours, then surely it's worth spending a few hours now. Sam nodded eagerly. Then Dave said, "The reason you start with yourself is that you need to know what you are selling. Most people don't know what they want themselves. Yes, it will change over time, and then your profile can change with it. You are unlikely to hit the bullseye, or put another way, get the perfect job. But we are going to make sure you are at least aiming at the right target." Over time, you'll develop career capital and be able to narrow in your focus. What is career capital? Sam asked. We'll cover that more carefully as we go through the targeted approach. But basically, it is a concept that Cal Newport termed. It is anything that makes you more employable in the future. It includes anything that reduces the risk to the employer, such as having a network or the right experience. It is not actually the experience they necessarily want, but it is an indicator that you can do the job. Sam felt a lot better. He knew it would be some work, but he needed a plan, a strategy. He didn't want to feel aimless anymore. He and Dave agreed to meet one evening later that week to get started. In the meantime, Sam would research 80,000 hours and Cal Newport.